The key elements of a regenerative agriculture are firstly to tread lightly on the soil and on the environment. You don't want to bully the environment. We've got to work with nature. Secondly, we've got to value those main attributes, the water. We've got to try and maintain as much water in as good a quality as we can that is provided by nature. And if we do bring extra water in, we do it with moderation and we do it with care and we make sure that that water has a quality where it's worthy of being brought in. The next thing is our soils. We need to try and make our soils uh, deeper and capable of holding more of that water and higher in carbon. Uh, carbon is a, an ideal measure for a number of reasons. It's, it's a measure of fertility, it's a measure of water holding capacity and it's a, a, a measure of structure in soils which we should uh, aspire to have as an improvement on our land. The Living Classroom is a, an area of 150 hectares, which is a bit over 300 acres. We're on the south and western side of the town of Bingara, and it was what was called the town common. And about uh, 12 years ago, a group of community people started to give some thought to what other purpose it might serve, rather than just being a bit of an eyesore on the edge of town. And we saw it as an opportunity to roll out four pillars of growth. One was education. We had a very low level of education achievement in the Shire at the time. The second was agriculture, but looking at agriculture as how it would progress into the future. The third one was tourism, and we were starting to develop a little bit of a tourism market at that stage. And the fourth one was conferencing. Well, right from the very start, we were very conscious of making an Indigenous story to go here. And we had a, an archaeological weekend where we, we looked at the site and had both archaeologists and Indigenous uh, elders come in and, and young people come in and, and spend the weekend here and, and just walk about the site and see what we could find. And lo and behold, one of our great delights was near the entrance of the site, which had been simply chosen because it was the best part of the road, there is a very big yellow box tree. And when the archaeologists looked at it, they realised it was a scar tree. And the estimate is that the scar is possibly 150 to 200 years old, and the tree probably 250 to 300 years old. I won't say a fossil because it's alive, a living a reminder that this land is older than European settlement. We've started about eight projects thus far. The, the buildings that we've got here are a part of the primary industries trade training centre. So we've got a, a classroom, we've got a workshop, we've got a nursery and we're about to build our interpretive centre. Now that is going to be like a virtual museum where we can showcase not only the story of the living classroom but the story of world food and the problems and prospects of agriculture going forward. From those four original concepts, the project has begun to go in a number of different directions, including some very exciting ones, like with native grasses, developing bush tucker food and food options, showcasing ways to integrate different food systems from around the world, looking at ways of developing our soils and recovering our soil health, and controlling water on the site. We capture nearly all of the water which now falls on the site and we hold it for a longer period because we don't have it as large areas of surface water. We try to get it into groundwater and then to have means of developing the soil so that it will hold more moisture, ultimately be uh, drought proof. So in the case of our carbon farm here, we're looking to showcase ways in which farmers can increase the carbon in their soils. And remembering that most of that surplus carbon was originally in soil, but it's been removed through disturbance, and it is now more in our atmosphere and from the atmosphere into our ocean. And this is one of the main problems we've got with the acceleration of global warming, changing the position of where the carbon is stored. If we can get it back into our soils, we get a, a triple advantage. We take it out of the atmosphere, so we reduce the, the load in the air. We put it in the soils, which will stimulate both the microbes and the fungi to give us more fertile soils, more fertile root growth of the plants that we grow. For every 1% carbon that we can add to our soils, we will store 175,000 litres per hectare of water bonded to the carbon, not freely moving in the profile. So those three reasons alone are worthy of, of our attention and to showcase how we can do that and encourage farmers to consider it in their systems. So we are here in an area of conventional farming. Most of the farming in the Bingra district is cattle grazing for beef cattle. As we go more to the north in the Shire, we go into what's called the Golden Triangle and we get into the, the, the fertile black soils and it's, it's more 
extensive grain production. And those two dominate, and they are systems which rely on a lot of machines, a lot of fuel, a lot of chemicals, uh, a lot of artificial fertilisers. And that system has been continuing probably since uh, before the Second World War. The challenge that we've got is to try and move back towards a more natural system. And we're not here to tell or teach our farmers how to run their businesses. But one of our objectives is to showcase ways of doing it differently and let them make choices.